Welcome to the Acrylic Portrait Painting Challenge Masterclass, lesson number seven, painting delightful details and nuances. Hey, I hope you're doing well as always, and it's just my pleasure to have you here in my studio, well, at least as close as you can be in my studio with our virtual technology, watching over my shoulder as I teach you how to paint a portrait you can be proud of. And we finished up in our last lesson putting in some nuances, putting in some uh, shading all throughout the image, increasing the contrast on her clothing and her hair and her face, uh, just taking a step-by-step -step process to bringing the portrait home, as we like to call it here in Realistic Acrylic Portrait School. Um, I'm proud of what you've accomplished. I've seen so many portraits in our Facebook group. Um, I've had the pleasure of critiquing them with other artists and helping you in the process. And you know, if you haven't taken the challenge yet, it's not too late to join. Even if you're watching here in our seventh of eight lessons, you can dive right in, you can get caught up at your own pace. So I encourage you to take part in the challenge. Uh, you can do that below at realisticacrylic.com forward slash acrylic dash portrait dash painting dash challenge. And of course, when you sign up, you'll get the welcome kit with everything you need to paint along with us. The reference photo with and without the grid, the supplies list, the palette layout guide, and of course the masterclass lesson schedule, which at this point is uh, just about finished up. But you will get everything in there so you won't have to worry about what kind of paint brushes to buy or what paints you need. It's all in the kit, so go ahead and grab that below when you sign up and the challenge is completely free, so why not? <laughs> this is your time. If you have wanted to paint a portrait, if this has been your desire, um, all you need is the desire to do it and the teaching, and the rest will follow suit. The reason I know this is because I've seen so many artists, people who wouldn't even call themselves artists, uh, but they had a desire deep down to be able to paint a portrait uh, for whatever reason, maybe portraits of their grandkids something they could give away as gifts, or they wanted to do commissioned art, uh, whatever the reason was, but they, they really wanted to do it. They just didn't know how. They didn't think it was possible with acrylic because acrylic is kind of a challenging medium. But I have seen so many artists take this challenge, the same one you're taking now, or a similar challenge, same process, and they went from not knowing how to paint to painting a beautiful portrait one that they could be proud of to hang on their wall or give as a gift. And so you can do the same. Now, if you're already doing this challenge, you, you know what it's all about. You're taking part in the process. You're seeing uh, something materialize in front of your eyes as you're painting. You're overcoming the challenges. Even if you find some struggles during the process, blending colors and uh, maybe the likeness gets a little bit off, I want to let you know that's normal because when you try anything new, it's not easy. Just like when you first tried riding a bike, right? <laughs> Probably fell down, had a couple of skin knees. Um, you know, when you first started driving a car, that didn't come, you know, just like that. That took some practice. And it's the same way with art. But I want you to celebrate your wins, okay? So if you paint, if you have a portrait on your easel or on your table right now that looks like a person, it looks similar to Diane who we're painting here. I want to give you high fives. I want you to give yourself a pat on the back because it's not easy to paint a portrait. Many people would have given up by now, but you haven't. And so for that, I commend you. All right, so we're gonna continue on in this process. It's gonna be fun here. Um, rather than the usual um, way where I've had a step-by-step -step kind of like one, two, three steps, in this one, we're gonna be kind of skipping around so much It'll still be step by step, but I'm not going to delineate the steps on the screen. Um, but you'll still be able to follow along. I'll show you exactly how to do it. Um, so we're going to have a good time here. Let's dive in with a word of prayer, and then we'll get right into the lesson. Father, I ask a blessing here on this lesson, the seventh of eight. We're just getting so close. And um, I just pray for the students watching that you would encourage them that they can do this on this home stretch they can bring their portrait to completion and that any challenges they've encountered along the way, they can overcome it, Lord, because 
uh, your grace makes us able to do that. And so I do ask that blessing on them in Jesus' name. I pray also, Lord, that you help me to teach uh, whatever next steps here, um, the series of layers we'll be putting on, help me to teach it with excellence and clarity. And Lord, I pray that technology would hold out and um, I lost the camera, but I just got that camera today in the mail. I thank you for that, Lord. Uh, so bless the students. Keep them in good health. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's true. I literally got a package in the mail today, and I got my fourth camera back. <laughs> it went down. It, it died on me. Um, but here it is doing the job. We'll be able to do some nice detail shots for you. So let's dive in here. Um, I got my palette all set up, and... We're going to be switching to you know, like more details, nuances. Originally, you know, we were using larger brushes. Now we're going to be using some smaller brushes. Although occasionally we will be doing um, some larger brushes as well. But let's go ahead and kind of hone in on the face right now. And I'm going to switch to my palette shot, and we're going to just kind of mix a, a skin tone that we can work with, uh, beginning with burnt sienna. And uh, we'll add a little bit of titanium white at this point. So somewhere along the line, we start switching into something I call a semi-opaque smoothing layer. And that's where we add some titanium white to the mix and um, literally start smoothing some of the graininess that we have from the acrylic glazing technique. And that's part of the process. Um, the acrylic glazing technique is fantastic for giving you the ability to get increased depth, vibrancy in your portrait, going over your sketch and not obliterating the details and thus the likeness in your sketch. Um, but it does have a couple of drawbacks and one of those drawbacks is it does tend to accentuate the graininess of the canvas texture. And so we, we endeavor to mitigate that by doing some semi-opaque smoothing tones um, we don't go over the whole portrait with it, but just in a few select areas. So again, titanium white and burnt sienna are really kind of an excellent skin tone to start with, and then you can adjust it from there. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit of raw umber dark so that we can get a slightly cooler color that I can bring into the shadows. And so we just have those three colors right now. And at this point, what I'm going to do is just test it out. I'll show it to you on the white card, kind of what it looks like. And then we're going to dive in here closer to the face. And I'm just going to basically paint over on uh, the side here. And I, I like to see how it looks as I paint it. And if it's um, in the ballpark, then I'll go with it. And if I look at my reference photo and I say, okay, uh, it could be, you know, a little bit darker here. According to the reference photo, my painting could get a little bit darker, so I'm going to put that in. I'm just going to start getting that in here. Now, it does help if your semi-opaque smoothing tone is as close as you can get to the value and color that you're going on top of. So I'm going to add just a little more titanium white to this mix. The opacity that you're looking at is probably going to be uh, about 50% opaque and let's go ahead and apply this. Now you have to be careful because if you add too much titanium white then it will get kind of muddy and you have to compensate for that uh, with a little bit of warmer color. So I'll add some raw sienna and pyrrole orange to warm it up just a little bit. Alright so now that compensates for the coolness of that titanium white so again, that's just something you'll want to keep in mind as you're working on this. All right, let's go ahead and switch back. Yeah, so that's that's pretty good. Um, this will, I think, go over pretty nicely. And as you apply the glaze, you want it to just exceed the boundary of the original shadow in question a little bit. Now, I do like to use a round brush, although technically, you know, for shading, most people would use a flat, but I like the precision. I like the precision of a round brush where I can 
get these nuances really dialed in because when you zoom into her face you'll notice there's a lot of different little uh, nuances taking place in there. There's a lot of little divots and things happening you know, like around her eyes and uh, little areas by the cheek and so on and so forth. And so you just want to make sure that we can get all that rendered. Now I'm going to adjust and add just a little bit more raw umber dark and pyro orange to our mix. Just going to darken that a slight bit. Now let's go back and uh, we're going to apply this over the skin tone and just smooth things out a little bit. And we bring it in here to the side. Uh, we'll go over the jawline just a bit. Now always be paying attention to you know your reference photo because what works up maybe here in this area isn't necessarily um, going to work down there because the colors are different. So I noticed that the shadow needs to get a little darker um, down underneath the chin and jawline. So I'm going to add some raw umber dark and uh, just a little bit of burnt sienna and then maybe a little raw sienna because that's a nice opaque pigment and that uh, will cover a little bit better, a little bit smoother. Let's actually add now a little bit of alizarin crimson too because that's a has a very strong reddish tint to it. All right, so now we'll apply that onto this shadow below her chin and that's going to get that value darker but because it's semi-opaque here um, it's going to be a little smoother. So you'll see that that shadow is going to get quite dark in comparison to the other areas. Now as I apply this across her neck you can still see some of the glazes underneath shining through and then here as we get into this section you look at your reference photo you, you'll notice that the color is just a little bit warmer here. Uh, it's got a little bit of a reddish tint in, in there so we want to bring that out into the image. Let's go back up here. All right. Now we'll go ahead and uh, switch and we'll add a little pyro orange and raw sienna. Um, getting just a little bit more of a reddish tint on that. Uh, let's pull a little bit of alizarin crimson into it as well. And we'll get, we're getting that more of a reddish tint that takes place right around the jaw. So we have kind of a darker part of the shadow and then a lighter part of the shadow and that lighter part of the shadow is just a bit warmer. Now I'm going to put a little bit of this new color on the white card so you can see it. And that again is just a little bit warmer there. All right. Let's go ahead and continue to add more of these glazes here. Take just a bit of titanium white and raw sienna. And we'll just um, continue this process across. So um, it takes a lot of adjusting here to get the right tone. We're going to pull more uh, pyro orange into the mix, a little more raw sienna to get more of the yellow side. So you're always trying to balance that out between these reddish tints and yellow tints. And because we're looking at the reference photo and seeing that the color kind of shifts a bit in those areas. So we're just keeping these small little zones. Now with a small brush like this I can keep the color pretty constant. Now I'm going to add a bit more titanium white and even just a little bit of Indian yellow as we get a slightly warmer mix and then a bit of pyro orange. And 
we'll go ahead and just um, apply that on the forehead running across. We're creating some lighter semi-opaque tones to get a nice gradient on her forehead. And the little bit of titanium white you have in there, I'll show it to you on the white card. Here's the color we've got. A little bit of titanium white is going to um, really make it so much smoother when you apply it. Now as we get to this midpoint of her forehead, um, we have to realize that this glaze won't do. It's got to get lighter yet. And so we'll do that by adding a little bit more titanium white to the mix. And we'll just kind of move down the line on her palette. Always having a dark to light zone. See how it shifts from dark over here and light over here? And that's always good to do that. So now we're going just a little bit lighter, um, pulling a bit more Indian yellow and titanium white in there. But looking at that reference photo, because it's possible that the color needs to not get too yellow. So let's add a little bit more pyro orange, which is more of a reddish tint, and some titanium white. All right, before that line we have dries, we need to blend into it. So we're doing kind of what we call a wet on wet blending technique and continuing this zone across. And uh, we're just kind of smoothing this out here. All right, so now I wanna go a little lighter yet. So we're going to add more titanium white, a little bit of Indian yellow that we just pull off from the side, and some matte medium. Okay, so lighter mix, and we're going to continue on. So now you can see the blend here as we continue on. All right, so we're getting a nice gradient in the middle and we'll go ahead and add just even a little more titanium white yet to this and I'll show you that how that would apply to everything all right so let's go ahead and add that lightest part Right here, we'll dilute it with just a bit more matte medium. Okay, and then let's go back and we just kind of blend that right in. Just like that. And that's how we get a really nice gradient on our forehead, a really nice highlight. Now we can follow this process throughout the rest of her face, adding these semi opaque uh, nuances and really starting to dial in the detail on her face. I'm going to lift up the camera just a little bit and we'll just zoom out a little bit as well. Okay. Now let's see if some of these other tones can be reused um, instead of like reinventing the wheel each time see if we can take some of these tones we have on our palette and introduce them elsewhere. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse off my brush really quick. Alright, we'll just kind of dip into some of these other colors we have here. Um, let's start with this one down here, uh, kind of a mid-tone, and we'll see if we can apply that to a few key locations on her face. So right here on the cheek we need a, a nice warm t tint there. I actually like to accelerate that and take some pyro orange and kind of start a tint off to the side using some of that, dipping it, and then putting it over there. And then adding a little bit of naphthal red and pyro orange, which gets it nice and vibrant. Uh, just a little bit more titanium white to lighten it a little bit. 
a little bit more just a bit of Indian yellow just to warm it up to compensate for that titanium white I think that'll be nice let's test it out and see what we've got so that gives us a nice kind of warm tint that we can blend into her cheek now you can't blend that in too far over to the right into your shadows otherwise you're going to risk muddying things up this color will only work over a certain tone and if you start painting it on the darker areas, it'll look kind of chalky. So now we need to take this and blend out of that with some titanium white, add some Indian yellow, and lighten this all up. All right, now we go back and we're going to, yep, we need to add a little more Indian yellow. Maybe even just a bit of raw sienna. Warm it up a little bit. All right, let's try this again. All right, we'll just get a little bit of shading across that upper part. And that color I've got is a little too yellow. Let's add a bit more pyro orange and just warm it up a bit more. All right. Now back to the canvas, just wipe that off quick and make sure I got kind of the right mix. It takes a lot of back and forth with this, a lot of testing, trial and error to get the right color. Now we'll go we'll add a bit more titanium white and some Indian yellow and uh, we'll go back into the cheek and then build a gradient going into the lighter area. Now at some point here we can actually, I think, really fill most of this area in. Well, maybe we'll just dab off a little bit. Because it needs to be just a little bit darker on this right side than on the other side. Put a little bit of this shading on that accessory jugal fold. Alright. So that's that's good and now um, let's go ahead and continue this process with these semi-opaque smoothing tones and we'll we'll go ahead to a darker part of our mix over here that's got more of the pyro orange raw sienna and so forth this is more of a mid-tone where as the other ones were more of a highlight and we're going to work up on the chin area test that color nope it's a little too dark okay wipe it off let's move into something a little bit lighter and then let's add just a bit of raw sienna to warm up the tint a bit and some matte medium to make it fluid now we'll go back and we'll apply it onto the chin let's just really zoom super close so you can see kind of the brush action and how this works what it looks like up close All right, so now I'm getting a little bit of a gradient on this highlight of the chin by using very light pressure. It's just grazing across the canvas. So these are some nice advanced blending techniques that you'll be able to use once you get a hang of the fundamentals of the glazing technique and portrait painting in general, you know, if you're new to this. But uh, these are some advanced techniques I'm showing you here, how to get some really nice blending and nuances on the face. All right, now we'll go ahead and blend upward into a few other areas. I do want to darken the left side of her upper mouth area a little bit, the area above her lip, just a little bit. Keep this nice and zoomed in here. Rinse off my brush. And uh, let's go back to the palette and let's grab something a little bit darker here. Looking at a reference photo and studying it, making sure that we've got the right tint as close as possible. Asking myself always, look, when I look at the color, is it more yellow or is it more red? Is it more 
saturated, more vibrant, or more desaturated. And what I mean that I'm saying is it more according to the grayish spectrum of color, or is it more like intense and vibrant? You know, because any color can be muted down by gray, and sometimes your skin tones call for something it's more muted down not as intense not like a vibrant sunset you know but here we're asking ourselves the ma the two main questions is the color in question we're looking at on the reference photo more yellow or more red and then you just pick the appropriate colors on your palette okay you got yellows we have reds but if these are too vibrant then you can pick from your raw sienna which is a less intense yellow and your alizarin crimson, which is a less intense red, if that makes sense. Kind of getting into some more advanced stuff here, but I just want to give you a sprinkling of that because you will um, benefit from that in this portrait. Okay, so let's go ahead and add this glaze here uh, to this upper lip area. And again, this is a semi-opaque glaze. Um, so just to kind of show you that aspect of it being semi-opaque, if I were to take a uh, marker, okay, if I were to take a marker and just draw a line on this white card in black, and then I paint over it, you can see how much it covers. All right, so as we scroll over, you'll see. This is how much it covers. You can still see through it, let me show you that. There you go. <laughs> you can still see through it, right? But you can see the opacity. So it is a semi-opaque glaze. That's what, we're, that's what we're using here at this juncture in the painting process. Now, let's go ahead and we'll bring that back to her face. And we'll go ahead and just keep adding these semi-opaque glazes to really smooth things out. Now you might say, well, Matt, why don't you just paint opaque and just ditch all the glazing? You know, because if you're going kind of opaque over the top, why do you need the glazes? And I would say, well, <laughs> uh, because the glazes set up the foundation. All right, if you just tried to do this right over a white canvas, it wouldn't work the same. Uh, you can still see the glazes underneath this and uh, not only that but the glazes allow you to segue out of your sketch without losing the likeness now if you just go opaque you're going to paint on top of eyes and nose and your, your mouth and it's going to get muddy and you're going to lose that that likeness and that's so important in a portrait so for that reason alone um, you definitely want to have the foundation of glazes. So we can finish up with more of an opaque or semi-opaque look. And then the other thing too is we're not going to put this over everything. There'll be certain areas like the background will allow that to be more uh, translucent, more transparent. But uh, I find that this really helps bring the face into a further state of completion to have uh, this kind of shading on there. So. Things can sometimes get a little dark, and if that happens, don't worry because you can go a little bit lighter and restore it. Like I look at this and I say, okay, this chin maybe got a little dark, but I'm not worried about it. I'll be able to go back and lighten it up a bit. Try to keep it as light as you can and, and not go too dark. Um, but if you do go a little dark, then you can lighten it up. You just use pi um, titanium white and then an intense color like pyrrole orange and Indian yellow to compensate for that titanium white. Well now, speaking of that, I want to get a nice warm tint on the left no nasal labial fold or laugh line. It takes some pyrrole orange and uh, a little bit of Indian yellow. We'll just kind of warm this up a little bit and then we'll go ahead and just Add that glaze to the inside of that nasal labial fold and there, just warm that whole area up a bit. Now we can also add just a bit more of this warmer tint with a bit of a lizard and crimson um, on this right hand side of her cheek. Just get a little bit more warmth in there. Just a bit. 
All right, and now um, let's take a look at the bottom here. Okay, so let's uh, let's see if we can just kind of continue the process here with some lighter tints. I'm going to move along just a bit more rapidly. I'm going to take some titanium white and uh, a little bit of pyro orange. Okay, when you're going light, you want to be using uh, like pyro orange and Indian yellow to mix into your titanium white. When you're going darker, you usually want to use burnt sienna and alizarin crimson in colors like that and raw sienna. Uh, titanium white, pyro orange. Let's go ahead and start applying this to a few other areas. Let's actually make this a little more translucent with some more matte medium down to about 30% opacity. And we'll just kind of blend this across um, some zones of her face here and just smooth things out a little bit and just tone things in a bit more as well. All right, so again, that's gonna overcome a lot of the graininess here that's part of the process of glazing. We'll come back in, we'll smooth things out even more. Let's go ahead and we'll blend over the upper lip area. Try not to get it over the dark areas or it will get kind of chalky and muddy. If that happens, don't worry. Just realize you'll be able to go back in and darken those areas. And again, that's part of the process. Um, and add a little more matte medium, dilute this out a bit more, and then we're going to add it to the neck. And let's just scroll that camera down or zoom out just a little bit so we can see that. All right, now let's go ahead and get a darker tint in that neck area. Dive back up to this darker part of the mix that has a little more orange in the mix. And we'll go ahead and add that in right in the neck area. Again, that's, that is a little bit more opaque right now. But, uh, that should work pretty nice just in filling that part in. And we'll get a little bit over here as well on that right side. And we can kind of tie it all in together too, which is nice. All right, so this is uh, this is where we're at right now. So you can see kind of the process and how we're developing some gradients on her face. Uh, we will need to do some more, but uh, it's a good uh, stopping point right now. We're just gonna have a little bit of an intermission. Again, no commercial here, but I'm gonna bring that process um, a little bit further along with a few bonus videos that I'm gonna do in the middle of this lesson. And uh, of course, those will be available in the Realistic Acrylic All Access Membership. Trying to show you as much as I can uh, within these masterclass lessons, but I do need to get the portrait just a little bit further along to show you some of the next steps. So I'm gonna just have a quick little intermission. It'll just be like that. And then we'll just continue on here and probably another 20 to 30 minutes or so left in this lesson. All right, so stick around, we'll do some more and I'll continue to guide you in this process. All right, let's finish up this second half here of the Spring Portrait Challenge lesson number seven. Uh, we're diving in here to work on her face, maybe a little bit on her clothing, um, hands if we have time. So this is a recording on a different day. It's just how it's worked out with my schedule and recording. So I do want to ask a quick blessing before I start here. Father, I do ask you to bless this session or second half of the session. Bless the students. Help me to be able to paint it with all excellence and bless their learning in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to dive in here um, with a small round brush. And I'm going to take... Uh, some titanium white to build kind of a semi-opaque smoothing layer and a little bit of burnt sienna. So take titanium white, a little bit of burnt sienna, which works well for creating some skin tones. And uh, what we want to do, actually we'll add a little bit of pyro orange and Indian yellow to warm that up a bit as well. 
Um, I just want to make a little bit of an adjustment and let's add just a bit of naphthal red. We'll get kind of a redder version of this color. What I want to do is just uh, work a little bit on the nasal labial fold on the left hand side and just kind of tone that in. So the color I'm choosing needs to be a bit lighter. Uh, let's take some titanium white and we'll go ahead and just lighten that up a little bit. All right, and now let's go ahead and apply that to the left hand side and we're going to just lighten up that shading a bit and now we'll go ahead and get into some darker tints here and I'll show this to you on our white card you can see that on the bottom what we want to do is just paint over some of the pencil lines um, so we can use these semi-opaque tones to do that. Again, the color you want to use typically will be titanium white, burnt sienna, pyrrole orange, Indian yellow. And if you need to make it a little more red, add some naphthal red. If you need to make it a little more earthy, add some raw sienna. And these are the colors that tend to work best. Over time, you'll, you'll get a sense really in how to use them better, but for right now, I just want you to give it your very best shot and um, understand that as you do this more and more, it's going to make more sense to you. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of titanium white and take some pyrrole orange. If we have that, titanium white, pyrrole orange, and a little bit of Indian yellow in this upper corner here. And with that, favoring more of the pyrrole orange side to make it more pink. We're using a small round brush. This is a size two. Um, and this is semi-opaque. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of add some nuances to the area under her eyes. And you're gonna be kind of converting out of the sketch stage. I mean, you've been doing that all along, but wherever, wherever you have any sketch lines, um, this is really gonna help to overcome that. And not only that, but in adding this kind of pinkish tint around her eyes, it's going to really increase the realism. Now, we, we touched on that a little bit in the bonus videos, which um, if you join the All Access membership, you'll get a chance to see. Um, but I also wanted to show you that here in this lesson too, um, to make sure that regardless of whether you do end up joining All Access or not, you have a chance to see this process here and how it works. Um, but you know we're putting again that pink around her eyes because that's where we have like the really profuse blood vessels and if you look at most images of people or even in person if you observe them you know you <laughs> don't look at them too intently or they might be wondering what, what are you looking at but you'll notice you know the kind of pink area or underneath their eyes and um, naphthal red or pyrrole orange and titanium white work fantastic for creating that kind of re sense of realism. And so, again, that's what we're doing right here. But we have to make sure our paint is fluid enough, so from time to time, you wanna bring out that spray mister and really spray your palette about every 10 to 15 minutes. And keep the paint fluid. That's the secret in this technique, is making sure everything is really, really fluid uh, without being runny. So. I'm going to show you my palette here and how that looks now that we've added a little bit of the spray mist. And if you look close, you might even be able to see a few of the water droplets um, and what that looks like. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it's a very fine mist and it just really helps the paint to glide on because if your paint is not fluid with acrylic, you're going to be fighting that texture all that time and it's very challenging to do realism when you're fighting texture. Now, um, in one of the bonus videos, and I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit, I had done a little bit of work around our eyebrows, taking that same kind of glaze like we did here, only maybe with a little bit more um, Indian yellow added, 
and I went over her eyebrows and just kind of lightened them up right up here. And so you can do that too in your portrait if her eyebrows are a little too dark, a little too thick, because if you look at your reference photo, she has very faint eyebrows and you really want to be able to capture that sense of faintness, that sense of wispiness of her eyebrow hairs. Um, so we don't do that by painting eyebrow hairs. That's not how we paint eyebrows realistically. What we want to do instead is just make the eyebrows generally a darker version of the skin tone. And then in a few key areas, we add maybe hints of the color of the eyebrows because we're not only seeing the eyebrows themselves, but we're seeing the skull structure, which adds a shadow um, in that area. And so that's what we're trying to do here. But I'm going to take that color that I have here. I'm actually, if you go over, you know, the area that I just mentioned, and because you're mixing titanium white with your glaze and making it semi-opaque, um, if you end up getting a chalkiness, then you can adjust that by taking Indian yellow and pyrrole orange and just kind of creating a transparent glaze that you can use to go on top of it. We want this to favor a little more of the reddish side, so add a little more pyrrole orange. But you'll see what happens when I take this glaze then and go on top and I just kind of do a spot glaze and warm it up and that will counteract the chalkiness Now you can use that for the eyebrows you can use that anywhere where you have any chalkiness follow that same recipe all right so the again you're going to need to lighten things up with semi-opaque glazes mixing titanium white and warmer colors into the titanium white to compensate for the coolness of the titanium white um, but the side effect of that is when you overlap that color, that mixture over a darker color, it will often look chalky because the titanium white is, is kind of reacting with that darker color and it's creating an, an um, kind of an optical mix, so to speak, of almost a grayish hue. And that's what you're seeing in it. We don't, none of us like to see that in our paintings and we see chalkiness it's like, oh, what do I do? <laughs> But it can be remedied. Just I want you to keep that in mind. It can be remedied. And the way to do that is after that dries, go over the area in question with a warmer tint, a glaze without titanium white, with just like pyro orange and Indian yellow. Um, and those two colors usually will work well. Sometimes you have to bring in maybe a burnt sienna um, or a naphthal red or raw sienna. But most of the times, pyro orange, Indian yellow. Will, will adjust it very nicely. And so that's how you can overcome. And you can see how that shifted it. Now kind of warm that up a little bit. And uh, we can go back and adjust it more, but I just want to show you that advanced technique on how to overcome um, chalkiness in your portrait. Because that is actually just kind of part of the process. So if that happens to you, you didn't do anything wrong, it's just, it's just part of the process. It happens to me too. It's all about how you react to things. It's not so much as what happens to you. Now, um, let's take these semi-opaque glazes because that's kind of what we're doing right now. And uh, I'm going to pull this on the palette here. All right, so I'm... <laughs> You can see on my palette all these variations, right? I got some areas that are warmer, some that are cooler, some that are redder, some that are more yellow. I'm always looking at my reference photo and just seeing what would be the best option. And sometimes you have to just test it out, just try. And don't be afraid of doing that. Don't be afraid of trying it out because if it doesn't work, you can take your finger and quick wipe it off. It seems to be the fastest way. Now, if you prefer, you can have a damp rag sitting next to your canvas and then wipe it off that way. But I like using my finger because my uh, finger is a little more precise and it's non-toxic paint. I mean, technically it, it probably isn't the best to have on your skin long term. So wash your hands when you're done painting and don't eat with paint on your fingers. You know how it works. But it's okay, I, I think, uh, to get a little paint on my hands from time to time. You would have to check with your dermatologist and your physician 
as far as that goes, from, from my experience, it's okay. Um, anyway, we're adding a light tint, light tint to her nose. And let's actually go ahead and lighten this up just a little bit more. Add a little bit of titanium white. I do want to just say along those lines what I was talking about before with toxicity. I do not use cadmium paints. Um, I always use, um, you know, that's why I use pyro orange and uh, naphthal red. I don't use cadmium red or cadmium orange because cadmium is a toxic me metal. And so I would, I just try to avoid getting that on my skin as much as possible. Um, so I don't use cadmium. But if you're using a cadmium pigment, then you might have to, <laughs> might have to just use a damp rag to wipe off any areas or wash your hands really quickly. Well, I'm using this lighter color to go over the pencil lines because I had a pencil line kind of showing her nose on the left side and really create that sense of realism, we want to have just the faintest little indicator of the left side of her nose. It's just a little bit darker than the area in question. So what I have right now currently is actually just a little bit off because it's skewing the angle of her nose a little bit this way. And I'll have to come in with yet a lighter color and take some titanium white. Let's just create a new mix here that's lighter in tint. Pyro orange. Up oh, too much pyro orange. Let's add a little bit more titanium white to counteract that. Um, and a, just a bit of Indian yellow to warm it up. I find that works well, especially when you're dealing with titanium white. All right, so that color should be close. Now I can go back here and I can paint in the middle of the nose. And with that, then I'm covering over that errant line that I have that was skewing her nose this way and now it should be straightening it right up and see so you can make these adjustments um, rather easily I mean I understand it does take a little bit of time to get used to how acrylic works that's why we're doing these classes to cut down on your learning curve <laughs> so you don't don't have to do as much trial and error as, as what I did and I'm just trying to teach you as much as I can within a short amount of time but um, you can make these adjustments and um, don't ever feel like just because we're doing a glazing technique where everything's very translucent or semi-transparent that you can't go on top opaquely. You certainly can and that's, that's just fine to do that. Okay, add a little more glazing and so in a few areas we're really getting um, some semi-opaque tints on her face and we're blending out some of these glazes in a micro area. So we're gonna have a combination of areas that are more transparent and areas that are more opaque, and that's okay. Um, we're just smoothing things out. So usually the process is we start very large with um, you know these very large brushes, very translucent, transparent, and then we get a little more opaque as we go on but we don't feel the need to have to cover everything opaquely, just only what is necessary to make the painting look smoothly blended, to lock in that likeness, and to get whatever detail is needed to make it look realistic. That's it. We don't need to do anything more than that. We don't need to do anything less than that. Um, let's work a little bit on her mouth at this stage. Uh, I'm going to take some titanium white and a little bit of romber dark. And I love that color for teeth. That's a fantastic color for teeth because, yes, teeth are white, but they're actually not white. We think of them as white, but they're uh, more of an off-white. And then the shadowed areas look much, much darker. So we want to make sure we're getting in the, the dark areas of the teeth. Um, and in fact, let's just zoom in a little bit here. And if you look at your reference photo, you'll see that it's a little darker here on the left, lower left side of her mouth. And that's corresponding to the bottom row of teeth that are slightly in shadow. Um, you'll also notice that the right hand side is a little darker too. And we're going to put in uh, some glaze work for that. And then 
eventually we will be able to lock in the highlights once we have a sufficient amount of the darker tints in here. Now you want to make sure the glaze that you choose is not too dark. Again, look at my palette and see how light this is. And in fact, I'll show this to you on my white card so you can really get a sense for what this looks like. All right, this is what we're trying to create, a color just about like that. So it's pretty light and it's pretty translucent. I would say it's maybe about 30, 40% opaque, maybe, maybe 50, but not too dark. Now with that getting dried like that, we can add the highlights. We're gonna take uh, titanium white and we're gonna set it right next to that other glaze so we can mix those two together if need be. Um, now, what I like to do is maybe add just a pinch of Indian yellow to warm it up, and I mean just a pinch, just a little bit. All right, just the faintest amount. See how I dragged it off to the side away from here so I could twist off my brush and get the excess off of my brush? And then I pull a little bit back in so I can really control the amount going in here. That's just a, an advanced technique for you. So it does make your palette a little more messy but it's worth it. And now let's go ahead and see if we add that highlight to the left side of the teeth. And again, looking at your reference photo, let's dial in not only the highlights, but let's dial in the shapes and bring the teeth up a little taller because I notice her lip comes down a little too much in the middle. Um, and that just happens to be the case with my portrait. Now with yours, it might be a bit different but I'm using this opportunity to not only add the highlights, but again, to dial in that precise shape of her teeth. Now we get just the corner, upper left corner of this next tooth, and then a little bit of the other one. So we want to have a little less highlight on this last tooth. We'll be going back and we'll be doing more work to refine this. This is by no means done. Let me just go here and kind of hit the bottom of the tooth as well, bring it down a little bit lower. All right, so try to get that precise gum shape up here, which we'll have to come back in with uh, the gum color and refine it a bit more. It's, it's a process. Uh, it takes a little patience. You can even add a little bit of a highlight to the um, lower teeth if you just dab it slightly and you just have to dab touch it with your brush like I mean just let it slightly hit the surface you're not using hardly any pressure at all and then you dab it with your finger to lift some of that paint out and that's how you do these fantastic nuances all over the portrait mostly we think about that being in the face because that's where people look most of the time if you're going to get things right you know in your portrait you want to have it uh, most accurate with the eyes, maybe secondarily accurate with the mouth, hair, you know, any dominant features within the face. Um, and then I'll, spe I'll spend less time on the hands um, because the hands just aren't quite as important. But they do say a lot. We will have to work on the hands more and dial them in. But I'm not going to spend as much time on the hands as I will with the face. And since we have some of these colors handy, speaking of hands, let's go and see if we can just do a little bit of work on the hands. Um, we'll pull in a little bit of this uh, lighter, semi-opaque glaze. Again, we're mixing white to achieve that. And we're just going to kind of dial in her fingers. Now here's an opportunity with this semi-opaque glaze to get the fingers to be lighter in value than the palette. Initially, some of the glazes got a little messy as I was working on it, and the palette started to, we started having some of the uh, palette color leak into the, the fingers as I was glazing on top. But now, here's our opportunity to get some good separation, some good distinction uh, between the hands and the palette. And so now we'll work on this other side a little bit, dial that in. I'll use this opportunity again to kind of strengthen the, the form of the hand, get the knuckles in there, 
established a little more accurately. Now this is probably paints a little less opaque than I'd like. I'd like it a little more opaque than this, but we'll just work with it and just hit it with a couple of layers. Maybe let's dial in the fingers a little bit, add a little bit of a highlight there. Um, and now we're helping the saw to stand out just a bit more. Okay. Um, I think we're probably at a good stopping point here. This is what we've accomplished. You can see um, we've added some glazes uh, to the areas around our eyes, did a little bit of work on the nasolabial fold, the teeth. Um, we did a little bit of work on the eyebrows and we also did uh, some work on our hands. And of course, everything else that we did in the first half of this lesson. So uh, this is gonna conclude lesson number seven, but I do wanna say thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for taking part in this masterclass series of lessons. Now we do have one more lesson, lesson number eight. That's where we're gonna bring your portrait home. <laughs> That's one of the phrases we use here uh, in realistic acrylic portrait school. I don't know where it started, but we're we're just like, you know, sliding home to home base, you know, if you're playing baseball, and I'm not even really huge in the sports, but we're gonna get you home. We're gonna help you bring that portrait home and you'll have a portrait you can be proud of. Um, you know, a portrait you can be proud to show other people and it'll, it'll get you going also in the direction of doing more portraits um, that will increase and get better and better um, in realism and in likeness as you put this new technique into practice, this glazing technique. But again, I'm so proud of you. You've accomplished so much. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing more of your uh, portraits. Make sure you get in with our critique. We have two more critiques coming up here. Um, so get your critique in your portrait in for critique and uh, leave me a comment below in the, the video here. Let me know uh, what you think of the lesson, how it's helping you, any questions you might have. And I look forward to seeing more of your work, seeing more of your progress, cheering you on in your success as a portrait painter. All right, well, God bless. Look forward to teaching you more. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.